The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Werner Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today we are talking planters at Kearney Planters with Colin Tinline. Colin, how's it going? Very well. Good hey, to see you again. It's great to be back here. Now, we were here last year. We talked about maintenance and getting the planter ready to roll. You know, everything from looking at the meters, blades, parallel linkage, and we even zoned the planter. Yep. But this year, want to do something a little different, building on that. You know, you got three things you want to cover. What's top on the list? Well, I think we should talk a little bit about a furrow wish list, if you will. You know, what what are we trying to do with the planter? What is the job of the planter? And, and some things maybe we should look for to improve upon it. Now, second thing on your list, Colin, is um, you know, a little different take on downforce. What are we up to? Yeah, if we can understand a little bit more about how the planter works, uh, we'd like to change the word downforce to maybe to the word firming force and talk more about furrow creation and, and what the planter's role is in that. And the last thing on our list is going to be you know, closing that trench. Also very important, um, as we're going to find out, several options. Yeah, several options. Hey, we're going to get going around this planter. Here we go. Yeah, so this time we decided to uh, kind of look into what it is a planter's supposed to do and, you know, what a perfect scenario would look like. So the, the first thing on our furrow wish list is, you know, we'd want moisture available to the seed. Uh, there's a lot of variables when it comes to this, conditions and weather obviously being, you know, the more uh, prominent ones. But the one thing we can control is depth. The second thing I would say, uh, you know, on our furrow wish list is that we want all the rows at the depth we set them. Um, we talked about block checking, uh, parallel arm health would come into this. Um, most importantly, is the planter leveled? And as a quick reminder, we want to do this in the field, at planting depth, uh, planter quarter full. Um, if we can't get the planter completely level, one thing to keep in mind is always be nose up. Guys in rocks and things like that um, also want to be a little bit nose up. But the, the main takeaway or the main thing I want to talk about here and the third thing in the list is down pressure. Uh, where do we go? How much do we need? And what, what does an ideal situation look like? So uh, the third thing on the list, more or less, is that we want the side walls of the seed trench to be firm enough to hold together so that no dry dirt falls in around the seed. But we want them to be loose enough that the closing system can destroy that furrow. You know, that sure sounds like I want to have my cake and eat it too, I realize, but, you know, uh, no matter whether we have spring down pressure, hydraulic down pressure, airbags, you know, all these systems require management and, and knowing how to manage these systems I think is, is the key to the success. Um, there's a thing most monitors use now called margin and what that is is we're measuring the weight carried on the gauge wheels. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that with downforce, there's downforce and there's upforce. I mean, obviously now we need to know that there, we need more downforce potential than we do up. Uh, things like narrow row configurations and attachments greatly affect this. The more blades we have in the ground, the more downforce we need. Um, but as we mentioned in the intro, we want to change our mindset a little bit and we don't want to call it downforce anymore. We'd like to call it firming force. So when I say the word firming force, you know, uh, once we make depth, then what? Then what do we look at? What are the next things to, to look at? And so we want to talk about gauge wheels. And, and the gauge wheel has several purposes. Uh, number one, it's a seal, which is why it's very important to have the gauge wheel arm health, everything tight, and have them shimmed properly so no dry dirt is entering the seed trench between the blades and the wheels. It's a literal gauge as, you know, we, we set our depth by it. We move the handles and the wheels are the stops. Um, but they're a critical factor in firming and in, in, in furrow structure. So what I mean by that is for the seed to reach the bottom, we need to have structure. But we also want to have not so much compaction that we restrict root growth and, and root development, right? So how do we check this? Well, um, the best way, as far as I'm concerned, is set at depth. We're going to have our closing wheels uh, tied up, and we're just going to drive ahead slowly and make a stop with the planter down in the ground. We're going to look down in that trench very carefully, and we're just going to see if there is any dry dirt that has entered the trench or if the trench is maybe perhaps collapsing around the seed. 
if we look down there and we say, okay, that, that, you know, that looks good, the, the, the side walls seem to be holding up, then the next thing we want to do is, is just uh, poke the side wall with your finger or with your seed digging tool or what have you and, and see that it easily crumbles. If, if we can't crumble it, you know, uh, if there's way too much, right, then, then, then we know we've got to back off a little bit. And I guess the other thing that's been recommended to us that we see in a lot of, a lot of our training lately is to dig sideways in the trench. I also am guilty of digging along the trench with my tool and my finger. You're trying to, to find the seed, but digging across the seed trench gives us a, a better big picture uh, uh, as the planter pass as a whole. You know, we can see then looking at the side wall, looking at the seed, looking at the bottom of the trench. Um, Something to keep in mind with the furrow force, I guess, and, and maybe this sounds crazy to some people, but I'm going to say to you, well, it, perhaps it, it, it takes more firming force to plant properly in a lighter soil or a lower moisture soil or a cloddy soil or high residue soil. Or, or even high speed. You know, when we when we think of speed, we can think almost of a, a, a water skier behind a boat. You know, the faster we go, the higher that skier comes up out of the water. But when we're planting in in sand, for instance, it doesn't take a lot of downforce to make depth. But after we make depth, do we have enough weight being carried on our gauge wheels to have structure there that the seed reaches the bottom of the trench? On the flip side, and this, you know, maybe again sounds crazy, but perhaps we need less firming force in heavier soils or higher moisture soils or even at slower speeds. You know, uh, the guys in the clay ground maybe are laughing at me now or in some of the heavier grounds saying you need less downforce or less firming force, you know, that doesn't make sense. Well, let's think of it this way. Uh, it takes a lot of firming force or downforce to make depth in those soils. But once we've reached depth, does it take any extra to create sidewall structure? And the answer is no, right? If we have way too much downforce, or we just, you know, we're all guilty of erring on the side of caution and, and going to the maximum, but essentially we're, we're lining the, the sidewall of the trench with, with bricks. And can our, our closing system destroy that? Can it remove air pockets? Can it, you know, close the trench. So that's, you know, something to think of. But there, there's an old adage that uh, we will walk alongside the planter when we're planting and, and you know, we'll, we'll grab the gauge wheel. And if, if, if we can rock it back and forth or up and down, then, then we don't have enough. If we can't turn it at all, th then we have too much. And if we can turn it with, you know, a little bit of resistance, then, then we call that good. And that, that, that still holds true. That's still, that's still a good way to, to, to check things. But I think maybe just that little bit step further and, and examining the, you know, the, the, the trench and the sidewall of that trench could, could just get us where we'd like to go. Um, lastly, or second lastly, I guess, on our furrow wish list is that the seed can fall into the bottom of the trench. We've talked about creating a sidewall that can handle that, that holds structure until that seed reaches the bottom. But there's a couple little things I'd like to just touch on as far as maintenance is concerned. Um, back to our seed blade shimming. Properly shimmed seed blades have a lot to do with trench width, but also the seed tube guard. And the seed tube guard gets often overlooked for its purpose. We all know it protects the seed tube, hence the name, but I, I believe it, it, it has a better purpose. And that purpose is to keep the blades from squeezing together when we have soil pressure on the outside. Those are seven eighths new and we call them wore out at five eighths, but if those are wore out and our seed blades are flexing, our trench becomes narrower and now we, we risk the potential for the seed to get to the bottom. Um, the other thing is, you know, depth is quite often uh, chosen based on moisture levels, but keep in mind the shallower we go, the narrower our trench becomes. And as far as the bottom of the trench, there's several options. Uh, Keaton seed firmers and things like that seems, seem to be very popular. Uh, and the very last thing on our furrow wish list as far as uh, what, what I can say is that we want to have no residue close to the seed. Uh, coulter maintenance becomes one of those things. Trash wheels are an option and also require maintenance. Um, bushings get wore out, bolts get loose, trash wheels don't run perfectly centered in the seed blades. 
and even uh, I believe you know speed disks and things like that are becoming uh, ever popular because we can practice shallow tillage with those and we can keep residue out of the seeding area.